Since at least the 1970s in Boston, the main gateway to the world of jazz has been Eric Jackson. He's best known as the host of Eric in the Evening on WGBH Radio. His 40 years at WGBH will be celebrated starting on Sunday in a series of events, including performances and a panel discussion. And to talk about what's planned and reflect on his musical mission is Eric Jackson. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Take me back to the beginnings of, of your uh, involvement with jazz. And I think this is even before you were even into radio, maybe. Yeah, I, I grew up in a house where, uh, you know, in those days you didn't have a lot of radios in the house. And especially in a small house, we had a big stereo in the living room. And my father was in charge of the music in the house. So what he played was jazz. That's what I heard. When people ask me about classical music, I'd say, I really don't know much about classical music. I grew up in a jazz household. So I was, uh, even though I listened to the same kinds of things that uh, teenage kids were listening to when I was growing up, I was very comfortable with jazz. I was very comfortable with coming in. Philadelphia had two uh, commercial jazz stations. I was very comfortable with listening to those. I could even tell the difference uh, that they, they, they sounded different from each other. And I was comfortable turning on jazz radio and listening to jazz radio. Although I'd also go listen to some of that uh, Motown stuff too that was popular then too. Of course, now, your father was a professional communicator. Right, uh, right. Tell me a little bit about him. Well, it's funny, he got into radio in a, in a sort of roundabout way. He had been a singer and a station in Providence uh, had a house band and they were looking for a vocalist and he went to audition as a vocalist and I guess the person that interviewed him said here have a seat and we'll tell you something in a second. Uh, so he, he, while he was sitting there two guys came out and they're talking about jazz and my father got into the conversation. He didn't realize that the interviewer was standing behind him listening to this conversation and when he heard the, uh, uh, heard the conversation, he said to my father, do you know anything about jazz? And my father said, well, I know a hell of a lot more than those two do. Um, and so they hired him as an announcer. That was in, I believe it was October, no, July of 1947 in Providence. Talk about how uh, things have changed for this music, because as you mentioned, when you were growing up, you had these two radio stations that had jazz. Commercial um, stations. Yeah. Commercial stations, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, jazz was wildly popular. Yeah. You know, you had Thelonious Monk on Time Magazine sure, or something. Sure, sure. Uh, what's the mission today to, to, to sort of engage people? Well, you, you're right, uh, it has changed, and most of that came with the, uh, with the coming of the rock era. I think that changed uh, the listening taste of young people. And as jazz doesn't seem to be as popular as other forms of music, it seems to be di disappearing from the airwaves. Fortunately, there is the internet which offers many options for people to listen to the music. I think the, the mission has uh, always been seen, or certainly has been seen over the last few years, as how can we get more and more young people to listen. But I think that's a kind of a two-edged sword because uh, young people are not listening to the radio in the numbers, or some people say they're not listening in the same numbers that they were in the past. Uh, you know, I listen, as I said, I listen to music because music was in the house, jazz was in the house. Now, with so many uh, mobile devices, you know, you stick your headphones on and nobody else hears what you're listening to. And so I think the young people are not being exposed uh, to the music like they were uh, when I was growing up. And I think that's, that's been a problem for the health of the music. But on the other hand, I think it's healthy because you still have schools like Berkeley, which have loads of students studying jazz, New England Conservatory. So there's still plenty of students who I applause, I applaud actually, because to me, they're listening to this music and trying to play this music because they love this music. They know they're probably not going to be on the cover of Time magazine. They know that that's probably not the road to great riches in music. Uh, but they're playing this music because they love this music. This has been the news, and we're talking with Eric Jackson from WGBH Radio. Uh, Eric, when, when I saw one of your lectures on, on music in African American history, one of the things that struck me was um, not how much this is authentic black music, but this is universal music. Uh, you know, talk, you know, we have this 
recognition of black musical culture, just that right now the Pulitzer surprise for Kendrick right, Lamar. Right, yeah. right. Well, I think the, the music grew out of the African-American culture, but I think it has uh, gone to be uh, universal music. I think people all over the world are jazz fans and, and listen to jazz. So, you know, yes, it's culture. It came out of the African-American culture, but we hope everybody will listen to it, enjoy it, and even play it nowadays. I have to ask you if, if you miss the old days of being confined to to live radio, that, that whole ritual in Boston, 7 p.m., we, we hear Tommy Flanagan playing right, a right, piece. Right. <laughs> uh, I miss being on it in the week because I think people's lives are very different. Uh, their weekend schedules are very different than their weeknight schedules. In fact, when they started me on the air uh, during the weeknights, they said, People are home, this is what management said to me, people are home, they're relaxing, uh, maybe they're still eating dinner or they've just finished dinner. They're sort of cooling out, chilling out, uh, knowing that they've got to go to work the next day. And so now I don't have that. And a lot of people uh, say, oh, I even forget you're on on the weekends because I'm running around, I'm doing this and doing all those kinds of things. So. And of course, the, 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 you know, the positive side, is, it, this is almost like a podcast. You can just plug into it whenever you well, want. Yes, but that's part of the internet age. In fact, the programs are archived online, so you can hear uh, the programs when it's convenient for you. Now. Well, coming back to the scheduled world, we have some events that are coming up starting on Sunday. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening? Well, there's uh, the two events at the city winery. The, on Sunday morning, there'll be a, a a jazz brunch at City Winery, and and then uh, I believe it's on Thursday evening there'll be a jam session at uh, City Winery. I've I've never been to City Winery yet, so this will be my first time uh, going. On uh, Wednesday, there's something that's being called uh, Meet Eric Jackson. It will be at the Boston Public Library. WGBH has studios there now, and there'll be uh, I think a piano and a vocalist uh, performing, they are pianists rather, uh, Rollins Ross, the pianist, and Athene Wilson will be the vocalist. And you know, I'm not, I'm not in on the planning stages, so that's how much I know that's going on there. Then on uh, uh, Friday, we're doing our usual live broadcast, month, monthly live broadcast from Scholars, and we'll hear Dave Liebman's group for that. Saturday, there is uh, something that, I, I'm, you know, I was uneasy when they said they were going to do this. In fact, I said I was going to stay home, and one of the coordinators said, well, putting it nicely, he said, you can't do that. I'll put it nicely. That's not exactly what he said to me. Uh, but they're going to have uh, two sessions. The first session will talk about uh, my influence as an educator, and there'll be a number of educators on the panel. Uh, they are to talk about that. Uh, Dr. Leonard Brown, who was a good friend of mine, was putting that session together. And then uh, later that day, same, at the same place in Northeastern, there'll be uh, a panel of radio folks talking about my influence as a radio announcer here in the greater Boston area. You've, interest, uh, you've interviewed hundreds of people uh, in this program. Probably thousands. Uh, thousands. Uh, right. Does anything stand out about what you get from that? Well, you, oh, one thing, I, you know, I learn. I, I learn so much from doing these uh, uh, interviews. I think that's the joy to me is it's always exciting. First, it's, it's exciting just to meet um, these people, you know. I, I meet my idol. I'm interviewing Giz Dizzy Gillespie, you know, it's like, Wow, man, you know, <laughs> that's thrilling. And then you just learn so much and most of the time when you're doing those, uh, those interviews. That, that's what keeps those uh, exciting to me. It's like, yeah, okay, I got a chance to talk to so-and-so. How many people, music fans that do you know, that wouldn't like to have the chance to sit down and talk with their favorites? Right. Well, we'd like to congratulate you on 40 oh, years. Sure. We're going to call that 40 years plus because you're, you're still going at it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, too. Eric Jackson. And you can still catch Eric in the evening on GBH every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night at 9 p.m.